Hello, it's me, I'm back. I'm doing some sewing today. I have a really quick little video for you and it has to do with babies. And so before we get started, I just wanted to say that I don't have kids. I don't intend on having kids anytime soon. There just happens to be a lot of people around me right now that are having babies and that's fine for them. It's also fine to not have kids too. And I'd really love it if people can just like hold their own opinions to themselves about having kids and not having kids. This is just about sewing for now. Thank you very much. All right, let's get started. Recently, I was invited to a baby shower, which was actually like a small shower. They called it a baby sprinkle because it was kid round two. They've done this before. They don't need this big celebration and stuff. And the there was a rule about any gifts that were going to be given had to be either secondhand or handmade. And so we all know that I love an opportunity to make something. So I was like, how about I make something? As I said, there are a lot of people around me in my life that have babies right now. And someone told me that having these like stretchy jersey wrap things are really handy when you have a newborn because babies like to be all swaddled up. And so rather than spending a hundred bucks on a couple of these things, I decided, hey, they seem easy enough to make. They didn't know the sex of the baby, so I had to go and find some gender neutral fabric, which I managed to find at Draper's Fabric here in Sydney. I hadn't been there much before, but now I, uh, I've been there quite a few times now and I really love their selection. The printed one is a viscose lycra blend from Italy and it was in the little remnant pile. So I managed to pick up two meters of that, which was great. And then I also got this other one, which is a plain fabric, which is a cotton blend. It's an eco cotton blend. Printed one is a little bit thinner. So I wanted to get the plain one as well to be a little bit thicker and a little bit warmer because it's winter right now in Sydney and this baby's a July baby. And so you gotta wrap them up nice and warm. The concept is very simple. These wraps are basically just like a one meter by one meter square with a bit of bias, no, not bias, with a bit of binding around the edge. Some of the sizes come in like 80, centi 80 centimeters, 80 by 80 or that kind of thing. It's just like a big square and then you can use them for all sorts of things, but mostly for swaddling. The printed piece was two meters. So I decided just to start by cutting that in half and then making two squares that were gonna be one meter by one meter each to do this is the most simple thing to do. You just fold diagonally on the short side and then voila, you have a square. I went through exactly the same steps for the plain fabric. I'm mostly gonna show you the steps that I took for the printed fabric, but I did exactly the same thing for the plain one. And I ended up making three all together. Once I had my square pieces, I folded them into a smaller square just to trim the edges to make sure everything was even and then I also rounded the corners just because I liked that kind of look and that was a feature that I saw on some of the ones that I looked at online. The next step was to make a big long bunch of binding for the edges because I had two one by one meters in the printed and one one by one meter in the plane. That means I needed at least eight meters of binding for the printed ones and four meters of binding for the plain one. Thankfully for the printed fabric, the remnant piece was a two meter long strip. So I managed to get a couple of good sized pieces without having to have too many joins in the full length of the binding. And to make these strips, what I ended up doing is I just folded the fabric over itself a bunch of times. And then I just used my ruler and the guidelines on my cutting mat to cut some two inch wide strips so that by the time it's all bound together, it comes out at about one inch. Before starting any sewing, I made sure that I changed over the needle on my machine from a regular needle to a jersey needle. This is a very important step to make sure that the fabric doesn't get weirdly pulled in any direction. I didn't actually know about jersey needles until a couple of years ago when my mom mentioned that I should use one. And I was like, what's that? And it's basically got a little rounded tip rather than a really sharp tip so that it can actually find its way through the knit rather than a woven fabric, which needs to pierce quite aggressively. The 
The first line of stitching I did about half an inch from the raw edge. I'm using a small, just a very um, narrow zigzag stitch. That's important when you're using stretch fabric as well. It just gives the thread a little bit more room to go so that you don't accidentally snap the thread. I have made that mistake before and it's like, it's, it's kind of annoying. I was very fast and loose with sewing all of this together. I obviously didn't leave myself enough time and I also significantly underestimated just how long it would take to bind the edges of these three little wrap thingies because they just, the sides were just so long. Like, I don't, I don't know, do you ever end up with like a meter long seam? Not really. And then especially, it's especially long because you sew one side and then you fold it all over and then you've got to sew the other side again. And so it just takes, it takes, it takes a really long time. I kind of just, I hadn't registered that it would take such a long time. I stitched the first side around and then trimmed a little bit where I needed to and I folded onto the other raw edge and then I top stitched using a wider zigzag stitch just to catch the edge and add a little bit of interest to the edging of the bias. It also, I feel like it's like a little bit more forgiving. You don't have to be so super precise rather than using a straight stitch. And with the with the plain fabric, I remembered that I had a bit of a bobbin of this orange thread left over from my quilted jacket project and still plenty of um, thread on the original spool. So I decided that I would use that as a little bit of a contrast um, stitching around the bias, around the bias, around the binding on the plain one, which picks up the little bit of brown that's in the fabric. And I thought that that turned out really, really nice. All together, this is a super duper simple project. I feel like if you have basic sewing skills, you'd be able to make something really nice and really simple if you've got someone in your life who is expecting a baby soon, or maybe even if you wanted to donate to your local hospital or maternity ward, find out what their measurements might be. Maybe they have some information and you can put your skills to the test and see how you go. Baby has since been born. I am yet to see the wraps in action. I don't know if they've been used yet, but I don't really mind. If they get used as like a little mat for the ground, that's that's just fine with me. I'm happy that I met the brief of making something handmade because also I just like to make stuff. So it's really lovely to be able to make something and give it to someone else. And I know that I've mentioned a couple of times about how long things take, but sometimes it, that time is worth it rather than just sort of spending a hundred bucks and it arriving in the post. So if there are any babies coming up in your life and you could sew a basic stitch, then get out sewing machine, get yourself some jersey fabric and have a go at making some little swaddle wraps. I'm sure the baby and the mum will very much appreciate it. And I'll see you guys soon. I'll be sewing for a real size human, i.e. myself, very shortly. So I'll see you guys then. Bye.